Our story starts at the outbreak of World War I. Lady Helen Monroe Ferguson holds the first meeting in Government House. Soon we have an army of volunteers. In 1929, our first blood transfusion service begins its vital work. When World War II is declared, Australia has a population of 7 million. Nearly half a million are Red Cross members. In every state, every capital city, every country town and suburb, this voluntary organisation is at work. Whether our men fight on land or sea or in the air, they will depend on the Red Cross. During and after the war, our tracing service brings hope to many families. To this agency come thousands of appeals each year, but miracles do happen more often than one would think. Meticulous searching in many countries have reunited countless families. Red Cross has played its part. In the 1950s, we reach out nationally for the first time. Red Cross Calling is born. Two shillings and a little time. That's your qualification for membership of the Red Cross. A war in which there is no front line, but which is everywhere. In the 1960s, Australian troops are in Vietnam. Australian Red Cross sends people into the field. The state now resembles a giant battlefield. The Australian Red Cross Society has set up disaster relief centres in all major fire areas. When Tasmania is devastated by the Black Tuesday bushfires in 1967, a Red Cross volunteer sets out to find a missing man. She finds him sitting on a burnt-out stump with a bucket over his head. He says he's hiding from the end of the world. Nineteen seventy-four. Cyclone Tracy wipes Darwin off the map. We're on the ground then, and for months afterwards, for the thousands of evacuees. Nineteen eighty-three. Ash Wednesday. We're there. But something as simple as a phone call is giving some newfound independence. We provide a reassuring daily phone call to elderly people. How are you going, David? Oh, really good. How are you this oh, morning? Pretty good. In 1991, a refugee processing centre opens in remote Port Hedland. Red Cross is there. In 1995, Red Cross becomes a nationally recognised training organisation. We've been teaching Australian skills to save lives since 1914. 1996 is a big year. The blood service in each state consolidate into one Australian Red Cross blood service. At the turn of the millennium, the Australian Red Cross deploys 88 aid workers on missions in 43 countries in just one year. A senior official at the International Committee of the Red Cross says it would be almost impossible to have a mission without an Australian delegate. 2004 Boxing Day tsunami. We were there after it happened and for the massive rebuild. Through the early 2000s, new services continue to develop. First aid training for people who have experienced homelessness. Advice on how to prepare nutritious meals. A healthy breakfast for hundreds of Aussie kids who'd otherwise go hungry. In the 10 years to 2008, Red Cross domestic services grow and diversify. 2009, Black Saturday. We were there and for the years to come. By now, we have Red Cross shops across Australian towns and cities. One Aboriginal elder says, Red Cross is like fire sticks, bringing life back into community. In 2010, our Even Wars Need Laws campaign gets lots of attention. In 2013, we lobby governments around the world to ban nuclear weapons. Humanity and history will thank us for our contribution. In late 2013, the Red Cross world comes to us. Now we have more than one million supporters. Look at what they're doing!
A hundred years of people helping people. It got going. What happens next? Get involved!